Okay, welcome back to Stein on Stuttering. Today we're going to talk about addressing the psychological impacts of stuttering. We've gone through the mechanics, and everyone asked me for tricks, tips, and techniques. Well, stuttering is not just about the mechanics. It, uh, it's a big part. A big part is addressing the psychological impacts, and we're going to do that over the next probably the next few few videos. So let's see how it goes. After I had gotten my mechanics down, after I felt good about breathe emphasize phrase, BEP, after I felt that if I could breathe it, I could say it, I was feeling good. I was making some improvement, some, and I knew there was something more and it hit me one day, all of a sudden I realized that 50 years of stuttering really messed me up. And probably like you, I felt like a prisoner inside. I, I had so much to say, I had so much I wanted to say, and I just couldn't. I, I, I felt like I had to break it. I had to break the mold, but I didn't know how. I recognized more and more that I was filled with all these, what I call now, stuttering inclinations. These inclinations, these thoughts, these tendencies to do things that people who don't stutter probably don't do so much. What were they? Like being defensive, like avoiding speaking situations, like saying no to everything. And that, that was me. Believe me. So, I tried a bunch of crazy different things, and one day I stumbled upon this idea. I would, I'm in the financial investment business, and so I have to say numbers a lot. And I would always say O oh, rather than zero, because I would substitute because I had a hard time saying zero. And one day, it just hit me, no, I'm not going to say O oh anymore. I am going to say zero. And if I stutter, I stutter. And it'll be one stutter rather than having this roadblock for a lifetime of not saying zero, along with a million other words, that I would substitute words out and put in fillers and all that. So, it came up to the moment. I wasn't even thinking about it, but I was about to say, oh, and I said, you know what? I'm going to say zero. And I said zero. And the world didn't come to an end. And I started to do that more and more. Rather than avoid a word, rather than avoid a sound, I was going to say exactly what I wanted. And if I stutter, I stutter. And that's fine. I have to get used to that. If I stutter, I stutter. But I'm not going to keep on reinforcing these roadblocks by substituting out words. The other thing I found was that these filler words, now that my speech was improving and I was getting my mechanics down, and I was speaking in phrases and breathing and emphasizing words, that the filler words were getting in the way. It was messing up my breathing. And so it was kind of a double prong thing here with anticipating stuttering and breaking those stuttering inclinations. So, so by doing this, I really focused on if I felt like avoiding a speaking situation, I went toward it. If I felt defensive about answering something, I said, no, I'm just going to answer it. If I said, was about to say no to a speaking opportunity, I decided to say yes. I said yes to speaking. I said yes to life. And by doing the opposite so many times over and over, I began to chip away, chip away at with this monolith that I call, you know, this monolith that it is stuttering. 
I don't understand it, but the more I chipped away, the more I did the opposite, the more I did what I really should be doing, the more I was chipping away and I could tell that I was becoming psychologically a very different person and I liked that person. So notice your stuttering inclinations, realize them, and try doing the opposite. Sure, you might stutter, you might stutter more, but you're going to be breaking down these inclinations that have kept you a prisoner for way too long. I hope this was helpful. See you in the next video. We're going to talk about the big one, breaking the stuttering anticipation cycle. Look forward to talking with you soon. Bye-bye.